Good day, Deep and Word family. Welcome to day 166 of our Bible study review. Today, we're going through chapters 32 through 33 of the book of Ezekiel. As you open up chapter 32, you will see that Yahuwah is still going in about Egypt and Pharaoh. And so chapter 32 is about taking up a lamentation for the king of Egypt, right? Pharaoh. And he says he thinks that he is a lion among the nations, but he's really a dragon in the sea. And Yah says that he will cast his net over him by many peoples, right? And bring him up out of the waters and cast him out on the dry land, right? On the field. And that his body will be food for the beasts, right? That he will be spread out and he will be the dinner, right? For the animals. Let's read verse seven. It says, when I put you out, I will cover the heavens and make their stars dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon shall not give its light. All of the bright lights of the heavens, I will make dark over you and set darkness upon your land, says the Adon Yahuwah. The significance about this, what we need to understand is how the Egyptians worshiped. They worshiped, right, Osiris, Horus, right? And they had sun gods. They had gods over the Nile, right? Pharaoh himself was claiming to be the god over the Nile. And so what he's saying, these false gods that you believe in, I will show you that I am the only God and I will darken the light that is over your nation. And you will know that I am Yahuwah. You will know that what you believe in, right? Your sun gods, your gods for everything, for all of the elements, you will know that you believe falsely. You will know that I alone am Yahuwah. Verse nine, let's read. I will vex, right, or trouble the hearts of many peoples when I bring your destruction among the nations into the countries which you have not known. Indeed, I will make many peoples amazed at you and their kings shall be horribly afraid for you when I brandish my sword before them and they shall tremble at every moment, every man for his own life on the day of your fall right? So these are the peoples, right? The nations that place their trust, their security, and their confidence in Egypt, right? Which has been a world power for over 2,000 years, right? And he's saying, you are going to fall. You are going to witness that this power that has been for the last two millennia will no longer be, right? And all of their hearts will be troubled because they put their money, they put their security, they put their trust in Pharaoh, and they're going to see the one who they trust in die. He says he's going to do it by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar and all who dwell in the land and all who trust in Egypt and in Pharaoh, they will fall by the sword. And this is what he says at the very end, as he always does, then they shall know that I am Yahuwah. Verse 16, this is the lamentation and they shall chant it. The daughters of the nations shall chant it. They shall chant it over Egypt and over all of her multitude, says the Adon, Yahuwah, right? So they're going to chant the lamentation and they're also going to chant that Yahuwah is the only God. And then starting in verse 18, Yah tells Ezekiel to wail for Egypt and all of the nations who trust in her. But he's saying, take up this lamentation and speak regarding the king of Pharaoh, right? That he shall make his bed with the uncircumcised and go down to the pit. And he says, this is who you will see there. You will see Assyria there. You will see Elam there. You will see Meshach Tubal there. You will see Edom there. He says, you will see all of the other uncircumcised nations, right? Who puffed themselves up in pride. And he says right here in verse 31, Pharaoh shall see them and shall be comforted over all the multitudes slain by the sword. He says, you know what your comfort will be? Is that you will see all of the other proud, puffed up nations, right? Who called themselves gods, right? Who claimed my copyright over the earth and all that is in it, right? When they made themselves to be a god, he's like, I brought them down low. I brought them to the lowest parts. I brought them to Sheol. And he says, when you get there, that will be your comfort. And then as you walk into chapter 33, you will see the father, Yahuwah, speaking the same thing, the same thing that he warned Ezekiel of back in chapter three, verse 18. And he says, look, if you 
If you see sin, right, and you don't call it out, if you don't sound the trumpet, the alarm, because he calls Ezekiel a watchman over his people, right? So he says, if you are watching them and you see the sins and you don't call it out and that person dies in their sin, he says their blood will be on your hands, right? But he says, if you speak it, right, and they don't heed the warning, then their blood is on their own heads but then he says right if you sound the alarm and the wicked man repents and he turns away and he starts living in righteousness then that man shall live but he reiterates again a man who starts off walking righteous but he turns away to iniquity he says if he continues in that path and he does not repent he will die in his sins that his previous righteousness will be counted as nothing right because it's not how you start it's how you finish you must finish your race in righteousness with all you do to stand continue to stand in his righteousness right we are also called to be watchmen we are also called to warn blow the trumpet your voice is a trumpet of warning sounding the alarm now if they hear it and they don't repent their blood is on their own hands but if you see it and you don't say it you have their blood on your hands that's scripture that is true we need to know that as the body of messiah Yahuwah reiterates his heart again through the prophet Ezekiel right here in verse 11. He says, say to them, as I live, says the Adon, Yahuwah, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? And now we walk into the latter part of chapter 33, which is the renewal for Ezekiel's call. So let's start reading from verse 21. In the 12th year of our captivity, in the 10th month of the fifth day of the month, one who had escaped out of Jerusalem came to me saying, the city is taken. Now the hand of Yahuwah was upon me in the evening before those who escaped came and he opened my mouth at that time and came to me in the morning therefore my mouth was opened and I was speechless no more now this matches up with Ezekiel chapter 24 verse 26 Yahweh said prophesy these things right he says I'm sending one to you who is going to proclaim that every judgment that I have pronounced is done right he says one will escape and confirm this to you and those who are standing among you right our Yahuwah Elohim actually made Ezekiel mute for a season, right? That he could not speak a word until the word that he spoke about Jerusalem would be accomplished. And so that's what we need to understand about prophecy. When Ezekiel tells of the times that he was prophesying, it's not always in chronological order. Sometimes it's here, sometimes it's there. But this is the time where now Ezekiel's renewal to prophesy starts because what he spoke about the one escaping now actually is in front of him so now ezekiel opens up his mouth and this is what he has to say verse 23 then the word of yahuwah came to me saying son of man those who inhabit these wastelands in the land of israel are saying abraham was one yet he inherited the land but to us who are many the land has been given for an inheritance therefore say to them thus says yahuwah Elohim, you eat meat with the blood in it and lift up your eyes towards your idols as you shed blood. Should you then possess the land? You rely upon your sword. You work abominations and every one of you defiles his neighbor's wife. Should you then possess the land? Thus you shall say to them, thus says the Adon Yahuwah, as I live, surely those who are in ruins shall fall by the sword and him who is in the open field, I will give to the beast to be devoured. And those who are in the forts and in the caves shall die of pestilence for I will make the land a desolation and a waste and the proud of her strength, right? Those who are pompous, those who are proud, he says, they will cease. And the mountains of Israel shall be desolate so that no one shall pass through. Then they will know that I am Yahuwah. He says, they have forgotten me, but they will remember who I am. They will remember that they cut covenant with me back at Mount Sinai. And he says, look, they will remember me when I make the land a desolation and a waste. Why? Because of all of their abominations, which they have committed. Verse 30. 
As for you, son of man, the sons of your people are talking about you by the walls and in the doorways of the houses. And they speak to one another, each saying to his brother, come now and hear what the word is that comes from Yahuwah. They came to you as a people and they come and sit before you as many people and they hear your words, but they will not do them. For they do lustful desires in their mouth and their heart goes after their covetousness. You are to them as a sensual song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on the instrument. For they hear your words, but they will not do them. When this comes to pass, and it is coming to pass, then they shall know that a prophet has been among them. Right? He says, he speaks the full, uncut, unadulterated word of Yah. And to them, it's just like a beautiful song. They're like, oh, it's entertainment. It's not real for them, right? Because they do their own will. They hear the word of Yahuwah and they say, come, let us hear the word of Yah, but they won't do it. This is the cry of the remnant in the here and now. Those who have the spirit of Ezekiel, those who know why they are called, who they belong to and what their calling is. Ezekiel was both priest and prophet. We are called his royal priesthood and we are all called to prophesy of what is in this book. We are called to prophesy the word of the Father. And the word of the Father is the Messiah, right? Messiah is the walking, talking Torah. Messiah would never speak a contrary word of the Father. He is the word of the Father. We have all been given the gift to prophesy of what is already written. That is the commission, right? Co- mission. We are co-heirs. This is a co-mission. He is trusting his body to speak his word, right? To be the watchman on the wall and to keep the sheep from going out of the sheep pen, right? And then to preach the truth to the rest of the nation so that they may hear, so that they may be brought into the fold. That is what we are called to do. May we all have the spirit of Ezekiel and preach the truth, regardless if they hear or not. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to move forward. Be bold because you have not been given a spirit of fear. You have been given a spirit of peace, love, joy, and a sound mind to do the will of your Father who sits upon the highest throne in heaven. He sees all. He knows all. He knows what's in your heart, right? He knows what you're going to say before you say it. Commit your whole life unto him and he will give you purpose. He will renew your strength. He will give you what you don't have on your own to do what he called you to do. Deep in word family, that's all that I have for you today. Until tomorrow, Yah bless.